fetching deer and wildlife stories. All right, so the buck has had what Chuck calls a haircut. Two massive drops were cut off of him. He's sound asleep. We're going to let him sleep a little bit longer, take him up to the pen, give him a reversal, and he's going to be happy then. He's going to be able to eat and drink without any obstruction hanging down in front of his face. This is actually the second time that I've come over here to Lone Wolf Whitetails. You know, I was over here last year, and it was, a, it was pretty cool because it gave me an opportunity to really get to know Chuck. Uh, Chuck Frazier is a, uh, he's a man's man, I'll put it that way. He's a straight shooter. Uh, when he talks, uh, what he says, he means it. And he's the kind of guy that I really, really like to be around because he is a straight shooter. My name's Chuck Frazier. I have uh, owned Lone Wolf Whitetails here in Cooley, Texas. We're 30 miles east of Waco on Highway 171. We've been raising whitetail and breeding them for about 22 years now. We have uh, about 1,400 animals and have 105 pens. My recommendation would be to come out to Chuck's place during the end of July or any time during the month of August. And the reason why is you want to see the bucks. Even if you want to buy does, come see the bucks. Because when you see the bucks, they're going to sell the does. Because Chuck has the mamas and the sisters to all these big bucks. And that way, you can pick which doe do you want to go into your pasture. Our primary focus or the goal is to raise pasture release females. Bucks always sell themselves. Everybody wants a buck. But we keep trying to stack genetics into the female. So if you breed her to a billy goat, she's going to make a good buck. Our deer, when they're three years old, 200, 250 pasture release females have produced. Say you want to come to Chuck's and you want to hang out with him and look at deer, bring a good pair of binoculars. Uh, and make sure and spend some time. I, I wouldn't come out here for a little 15 minute or a one hour tour. That's not long enough to do anything. Spend a couple hours out here. I'd say three or four hours. I get here early enough in the afternoon uh, to get to meet Chuck and get to meet his staff and, and uh, hang out a little bit. And then he'll drive you around. You can take a look at 105 pens full of unbelievable deer. So make an afternoon of it. Get the family, make sure and bring your binoculars and come out here and have some fun. I keep my cell phone with me 24 hours all the time. So if people want to come and visit, just give me a call, 254-747-1037. We'd love to have you visit. If you buy something or don't buy something, it doesn't matter. Bring the kids, bring the whole family. We'll ride around, look at deer, and see if there's some way we can help you. So it's uh, the beginning of the second week of August, and the deer out here are uh, just about grown. And, and we are looking at lots and lots of bucks. I mean, dozens upon dozens, and I, I would say maybe hundreds of bucks. We, we've got I mean, 130, 140, three-year-olds. Yeah, and I mean, we've we been got, showing uh, you tons of two, them. Almost 200 two-year-olds. Yeah, and so, you know, Lone Wolf Whitetails is huge. I mean, they've got uh, lots of pens, lots of deer, and, and lots of history. But I, I tell people that Lone Wolf Whitetails is the, the biggest deer farm you've probably never heard of. <laughs> and the reason why you probably never heard of it is because Chuck Frazier, the owner, is a, a very humble, modest man. And uh, he's not out there uh, promoting like a lot of people are, and he's got a ton of deer, as you can see. And as we sit here and carry on this conversation, we're gonna, we're gonna just roll some of the footage of some of these bucks. I mean, some magnificent three-year-old bucks. And, and you, know, you probably won't see many four-year-olds, and the reason why is because Chuck sells them. I mean, uh, the demand is so good for these deer, and it's not just on the buck side, it's on the doe side as well. But as we're showing you all these bucks, keep in mind, that the bucks would not be what they are without the does. It's all about the female. Explain it's that to about, the people. It's always been about the females. We all look pretty bucks, and I love them too. But the objective, my objective, the last 20 years is to breed for the female. So when you see a buck, I didn't breed for that buck. I bred to make the female. And I want a lot of power in that animal, a lot of basal circumference, a lot of width. A lot of time, like, you know, I want, I want it all, we all do. Yep. And you've got to have that in the female before you can ever get the buck. So I've got females, and I'm bragging, of course, but that's all right. Not bragging when you can do it. Right. These girls will produce a big buck if you breed them to a billy goat because they have all the power manifested in that female. You know, the females have an extra chromosome. 
and, and other things and their maternal traits that have to do with making a big buck. So, and so but, but, but in looking at all this, I mean, somebody may be looking at it and going, you know, how in the world can I get big deer on my place? I mean, because because we have all, I, I see, you know, I mean, growing up, I mean, I wanted to believe what the state biologists would oh, say. The state I wanted is to believe so crazy. what I wanted to believe what all these deer experts would say. Antler, and all of a sudden, point, antler point restrictions. Yeah. Shoot a spike. Don't shoot a spike. And we know that that's, that's a bunch of bull. Spread about. restrictions. But but what happens is we have been sold a bill of goods by a lot of people that supposedly know a lot about white-tailed deer, and I think not until I started the deer farming show and visited now hundreds of deer farmers and meat guys like Chuck Frazier have I realized that we were sold a bill of goods. I mean, how many times have you seen a little knucklehead one-year-old grow up into a gigantic yeah, two-year-old? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, but, but what happens is that, that a lot of people just don't listen to deer farmers. I think, you know what, this man right here, Chuck Frazier has raised more white-tailed deer than most people have ever seen in their lives. And and he is an encyclopedia. He's he's the Google. I don't know if I go that far. Well, you're, you're the Google for anybody interested you know, in white-tailed deer. I love it. If you do this, you've got to do it for the love of the animal, you or you just wouldn't do it. Right. And the and I like breeding, especially. It's a lot of fun to do the breeding. And I find if you breed traits into these animals, they'll pass it on. And the state has just bred they are inbred, small on top of small, on top of small, on top of small. Brothers breeding sisters and fathers breeding daughters. And I mean, it's almost like ancient Egypt. And then the, the, and then the hunter comes in there and shoots out the biggest of the small, leaving even smaller even ones to smaller. do the breeding. That, that's right. And when that happens, what are you going to get? You're going to get tiny. They and, were and, smaller. When I started 20 years ago, the native populations here were bigger much bigger than they are now. So, I mean, they just continually every year get worse and worse okay, and worse. Okay, so we're going to run out of time on the show if we if we don't start showing more deer, but let's do this. If somebody wants more information, to come out here and look at the bucks, and if you want does, I mean, Chuck's got a ton of does too, and that's yeah. probably what I would recommend you doing. Yeah, I mean, bucks are easy, the don't, does. Don't mm. buy a breeder buck. And I, I may be that's killing good advice. myself, but I tell people, don't buy a breeder buck. You buy the, the females with the belly, baby in their belly. I sell a lot of breeder bucks, but it's in a controlled situation where they've got to control breeding and they don't put him out in that normal pasture. Okay, so if you want more information about coming over here to Lone Wolf Whitetails, give them a telephone number. 254-747-1037. Okay, I want to go see Longhorn. Can you show me Longhorn? Oh, you're lucky. Uh, that's let's, what I hear. <laughs> let's go see. Okay, when people come out to my deer farm, they see these clothespins in the gate, and they think, what in the world are they for? Well, this is kind of like a redneck inventory system, and this is for the fawns. This tells me how many fawns were born in this pen. I've got clothespins on every single pen. And what this does, I've got pink ones for the girls, blue ones for the boys. What this does is it tells me exactly how many I have. So when I go in the pen to check them, I count them up to make sure I've got the exact number of fawns in the pen that it says I have. It's a redneck inventory system. Just another day on the farm. All right, folks, before we go any further and show you this buck named Longhorn, I want to tell you there was a guy I was talking to the other day that contacted Chuck that bought 30 does from him. And the reason why is because he's got unbelievable genetics. These 30 does he's going to put in the piece of property. He's going to let them have babies. And once they have babies, then they're going to have babies, and they're going to have babies, and he's improved the genetics on this piece of property. That's what people do when they deal with Chuck Frazier. They buy deer. Put them out there and mostly, I mean, I look at it, he'll sell you bucks. I mean, we're going to show you tons of bucks. But the best way to do it, I look at it, the best bang for the buck is when you buy bread doughs. And so with that being said, we'll give you Chuck's phone number in just a second. But what I want you to see, I want you to see a buck named Longhorn and tell me this buck isn't beautiful. Look at the beams on him. You know, I sold Longhorn's mother to a high fence ranch owner last week. Did you really? I didn't, I didn't know even which one it was, but I don't pick out and try to save them. A lot of people try to save their best dough, but every dough I have is the best dough. They're all good. I've been breeding them 20 years just to make big females. Okay, so so Longhorn is a three-year-old. He's a three-year-old. And look at the yeah. frame on him. I mean, it's, yeah. it's phenomenal. I mean, how long do you think his beams are? 
33. Yeah, they're long, and the way they turn down like that, yeah. he is and then, some and then, kind and then of the pretty. Mass, now the mass comes from a northern buck, and that that tine length comes from a southern buck. But we line bred the mother and put all the power in her that we could put in her, just so you get the blood flow. Then and we talked about that before. Then and we so, put so wait a minute, hold on. on her. But but what you've got, you've got not just Longhorn's mother that you that was born out here, but you've got all these other mothers that are out here. Oh yeah. Wait. That if you breed a deer, and you sell that deer to a deer breeder, they're going to get the fawns that are in her, and her. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely. mean, what? A, what? A, That's the best, best bang for the buck. So by when, far. Okay, but give him a telephone buy, don't number. Don't buy a breeder buck. That's not. It's a waste of money. In my humble that, that, opinion. Okay. That, that's huge, folks. That's huge for him to say that because he he could. The reason why I say that's huge, he could sell you a breeder buck. Just write a check. Mm -hmm. But if you want the best return on investment, okay, the best return on investment, in my opinion, is not going to be getting a breeder buck. It's going to be able to spend that money and buy breeder does. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, ab absolutely. Now, they, there, there is an exception to that. If you have a high fence ranch and you've cleared out everything there, there are no natives at all, then you can buy an open doe and, and a couple of breeder bucks. I've had people do that. Now, and that, that works. works. That, works. that works. Okay, that give works. them a phone number. 254-747-1037. Okay, Chuck Frazier, Lone Wolf Whitetails, we're just outside of Waco, Texas, about 100 miles. You need to come over here and visit and look at Longhorn. Ain't he beautiful? He's beautiful. We, have, oh, yeah. we, have, we have no stalker bucks left. All the bucks are gone. They're okay. on the sale this year. Okay. So virtually every three-year-old on the farm has been sold. You think deer farming business is good? Every three-year-old buck on the farm is sold. But what I think the sleeper is, is the does. I mean, these bucks that we've been showing you, they have sisters and they have mothers that produce yeah. these bucks like I'll, this. I'll tell you, those are 180 to 220, mostly typical, big, framey, two year olds. So, what and do you I've think? I've got do all three? the mothers that produce them. <laughs> yeah. I've got some yearlings that are 150, 180 inches. Yeah, so what do you think? Uh, the mothers are here, the sisters are here. And uh, speaking of that. Yeah, and that's we, another thing. Buy the wound sister of the biggest buck. I have people do that from time to time. And every one of your deer, you can guarantee pedigree on them uh, and through the registry. Pedigree. Okay, so let's do this. Live delivery, they're healthy. Every guy, even young guys like us, lead, yeah. you know, we like to look at pretty girls. Oh, so yeah. let's go look at your pretty girls and show everybody. Okay. We're gonna show Chuck Frazier's pretty girls to let's you right now. Let's go see some girls, we'll see them. If you're wondering, for example, if you buy open does, when those does could be delivered. Typically it's in October, and the reason why is in November is when these deer come into estrus and they're bred. So buying open does, you can get them in October. If you're buying bred does, typically bred does are delivered late March, early April, because but they're I, heavy I like bred. to get the people out in October or November to, to so figure out see. how they want to breed them. Right. They're going to breed them. Then they'll choose the semen to put in her and the cleanup buck. Well, you allow them to come out here and oh, actually yeah. participate. They'll, come, they'll so, come and help AI. You know, he's got a barn down there that's got everything in it, and you can come and bring your family and participate in the breeding process. I mean, you want to learn about deer breeding? Come on, man. Look at this. It always helps to like watermelon, too. Oh, yeah. So this is the time of year when bucks are, I mean, they're pushing, man. They are pushing that antler growth. I mean, you look at them and think, golly, I mean, you got... I mean, these bucks with these big flyers and, I mean, drop tines, sometimes really massive drop tines. Well, there's a buck out here that's got the biggest drop tines I've ever seen, and he needs a haircut. All right, so I want you to take a look at this buck right here. Uh, we filmed this guy and showed you the video of him just a little while ago. He had these great two big drops off of him, and this is what he looks like afterwards. And now what we're gonna do is show you just a little bit about how he got this way. He had to get what Chuck likes to call a haircut. Uh, we darted this buck today to cut his drop tines because they're in the way of him eating and trying to eat some grass in the water trough. Well, we're gonna get this banner we just purchased, and we're gonna wrap around the drop tines and band him and cut him off. The reason why we band them so he won't bleed. We're gonna put it right around, right here where it's real good and perfectly circle so he won't bleed too much or this band can get real tight on there. I'll start tying it up.
That just cut the bender off. We didn't need this extra part. This is all we need where we, we squeeze this little tool down here with this little band. And it's real tight around there now. And we'll fix it and get our saw, Mr. Brown. There we go. This is where we cut off. See all that blood flow? Now we're gonna do the same thing on this other one. This time of year when they start growing too big and we get too much into it, they'll scratch themselves on the tree, they'll get an infection, we have to prune it off. Sometimes they'll get a big drop, they won't be, they'll tilt their head over. We have to cut that off to help the animal help and keep him healthy. Here's the other one we just cut off. Now we're gonna spray them with some wound spray so you won't get an infection or flies laying on there. And that's it to it. We'll let him sleep that drug off a little bit and then we'll give him his reversal and let him back go back to his pen. All right, so the buck has had what Chuck calls a haircut. Two massive drops were cut off of him. He's sound asleep. We're gonna let him sleep a little bit longer, take him up to the pen, give him a reversal. And he's going to be happy then. He's going to be able to eat and drink without any obstruction hanging down in front of his face. All right, he's getting up. Look at that. He's gone that fast. All right, y'all got any questions or comments about the video? You know exactly what we do. We love to hear from you. I'm Keith Warren, and thanks for watching. This is your cat. What your wife said about that cat. I don't want a cat. It's adorable. It is cute, it's but it's not going to be mine. Here, it's yours. No, you, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. It's a calico. Here, that's the only you. time it's been quiet isn't in the last she hour. So, isn't she so sweet? Oh. He's <laughs> <laughs> sweet, huh? Here. Uh, Chuck Frazier is uh He's a man's man. I'll put it that way. And he's the kind of guy that I really, really like to be around because he is a straight shooter. I want to encourage you, call my friend Chuck Fresh. He'd love to hear from you. Check him out on Facebook. Get to know Chuck, and you'll love him too. My name is Keith Warren, and I'd like to thank you for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories.